Have you ever dreamed of opening your own hobby shop? Sure you have. Well, two years ago, I did just that. It's been a long and difficult journey, but there's been lots of highs and probably twice as many lows, but somehow we are still here. And I thought it's about time I shared a part of that journey with you guys. So with that, my name is Oliver, and this is Broadsword Wargaming. In 2020, I made the decision to open a store. To be honest, it kind of just happened. We started stocking Geek Gaming as an EU distributor after Brexit because we are based in Ireland in the EU. We got Wargames Atlantic models in after doing a few videos for them, then Mantic, and eventually Games Workshop and everything else. As it began taking more time to run, it hit a point where we either had to go all in or something else would have to change. In this video, I'll be discussing the pros and cons of this decision, as well as looking at my personal experience of opening a hobby shop and the challenges I have faced. Stick with me and I'll do my best to give an open and honest breakdown of everything that is involved, including the tough stuff. Now, this hasn't been a particularly easy video to make because honestly, it hasn't always been a particularly easy journey. And with that, let's get stuck in. One of the coolest things is being able to turn your passion into a job. I mean, imagine waking up every day excited to go to work. It's not always easy, but with some hard work and dedication, it is possible to make a living doing what you love. On the days when I have the time to sit and enjoy and look around at everything that is here, those are the days that make everything worthwhile. That said, not everything is perfect. Starting any business requires a significant amount of capital, and running a wargaming store is no exception. You'll need to invest in inventory, equipment, marketing, and staff, and you will need to find a way to gain access to that kind of money. Personally, I have just invested all of my wages from the last couple of years into this business. Whether that's a wise thing to do or not, I don't know, and it, of course, has placed some financial strain on my lifestyle. But this is all part of running a small family business. Another comment I always get is, man, it must be so cool to just do nothing but play Warhammer all day. If I'm being honest, um, I don't think I've ever in my life played less wargaming games, you know, whether that's Warhammer, Magic, whatever. I just don't have the time. Now, that is partly down to the fact I have the YouTube channel as well, which you're seeing this. Obviously, that takes up pretty much any spare time I have. Um, I still have another job. But yeah, working in a hobby shop, the last thing I get to do is hobby. So yeah, bit of a doozy. What's that? You don't like admin? Maybe you shouldn't open a hobby shop then. Fake typing, fake typing, fake typing. Did you get the fake typing? Yeah. You got the fake typing, okay. <laughs> I could lose myself doing admin all day, every day, if I really wanted to. And I really, really, really don't because I don't enjoy it at all. But there is email after email after email, order after order after order, keeping everything stocked, um, responding to suppliers, emailing new suppliers, stock check, emails. Did I say emails already? I probably said emails already. There's a lot of emails, there's a lot of emails. It's not something I enjoy and I'm getting a bit of a hunchback from sitting here all day doing it, but it is a huge part of it. It's something that is always, always there. You're never finished, it never gets done, so. As a store, we are a pretty active member in our local wargaming community, and this offers so many cool things. We get to share our knowledge and expertise with other players. We get to network. I get to access new games and products and introduce other players to these. We have awesome community support, and most of all, we get to build a fun and entertaining, as well as fully inclusive environment for all players to connect up with like-minded individuals who all share a passion for gaming. It's such a wonderful feeling. I guess one cool advantage is I do get to pick up models at trade price. Um, that's pretty awesome. It has led to a rather ridiculous pile of shame. And to be honest, I don't get any time to really do hobby anymore anyway. So I suppose, I suppose that one can wait until another day. Running demo games in store is hugely important and it's something we both enjoy doing. I love, love giving people um, their first introduction into the world of Age of Sigmar because it's a game I love, but I have to be ready to walk them through any game system that they're interested in, which means keeping on top of the rules, which can be a little bit challenging, but um, it is it feels really good to get somebody in interested and enjoying it and picking out their first army and learning the basic rules. It's just, it's a really overall fun experience for me. Um, also having these nice boards to use and really nice painted miniatures, it all adds up to giving just a really nice immersive experience to somebody who's come in the door. Another difficulty is you rely heavily on your suppliers to provide you with the goods and services that you need to run your business. Finding reliable suppliers can be a challenge and negotiating prices with suppliers can be even more difficulty. Finally, there is always the risk of supply chain disruptions. 
As I'm sure many of you are aware, Games Workshop have struggled in the past couple of months to keep up to date with all of their deliveries, forcing us to have to either cancel deliveries or be late in giving products out, leading to customer dissatisfaction. And although that's not our fault, personally, you feel responsible for any of those problems. Another part of the job that honestly I hate is packing parcels. There are so many things that go into sending an order. Um, you have to buy the boxes, the tape, the materials, the packing materials. Not only that, things go wrong. You, I might mispack something, which cost me a whole nother shipping delivery. Um, and I don't think I've ever yet got something back from UPS or DPD or DHL or GLS or OnPost. If something has gone missing, or the package has been failed to be delivered, or something is damaged, I've never yet had a refund. So if I send a package out to Germany for 18 euros and it doesn't all make it there, or it gets damaged or lost, I lose not only the products, but also the packing and shipping delivery as well. So it's pretty rough. It's part of a business, but it's definitely one of the worst parts of the business. Having Kira here at the shop, it means we have a shared passion, we have a better work-life balance, we have a support system for each other, we have shared experiences, and it allows you to get some perspective on the things that really matter in life. It's important to prioritize time with your loved ones, even when you have a busy and fulfilling career. All right, so I think you've seen the majority of the shop now, the downstairs storefront, up here in the studio and out back where we pack the orders. This, just for your information, is like head shop number 40 now, um, trying to convey in one succinct, easy to follow way, what it's really like to run a hobby shop. And I'm actually finding it quite difficult to talk about without veering off on endless points. So I'll do my best on this take to get it right. Honestly, because that's what I want to be brutally honest, it's very difficult. Um, starting your own business, a family run business, being self-employed is always tough. It, nothing is secure. I've been self-employed for about 15 years of my life as an actor up until now, so I'm used to not having a secure income. I have a full-time job at the moment. I have YouTube, I have the shop, I have a child at home, and Kira Twitch streams, and I'll look after the child if she's here at the shop. So all those five elements, I'm struggling to, to separate them because to me, it's all one. I'm here in the shop filming now, which is also the studio. Kira is at home doing a Twitch stream. So. My life, I don't know if this is how other people feel when they run a shop or a business, but it, it becomes everything, right? If I'm not working here or filming a video, I'm thinking about filming a video. If I'm not filming, working, or thinking about filming a video, I'm feeling guilty for not doing so because there is no safety net. If I'm ill, there's no money for me. There's no, that, that's the problem with being self-employed, right? Not only that, all of my money is tied up here in the shop and I pay Kira's wage. She let quit her job 18 months ago to work here, so that has to happen, that, that has to be paid. Um, and I feel a lot of pressure on me to support everybody, right? And, and this is the issue I'm sure for so many people, right? it's not me complaining, I'm very fortunate to have got myself into a position where this is a possibility. But there isn't enough money in the business after two years and four years of YouTube for me to take a full-time wage and pay Kira a full-time wage. I don't even pay her a full-time wage, she doesn't work 40 hours a week. Um, and, and I think, a lot of people tell me this is the dream and this is what they want to do. And I, I, in some respects it is. It's wonderful to be able to work in an industry in which I love. Um, this has been a part of my life for 30 years. And the reason I started the channel in the shop was because I had such a great experience from like the ages of what, eight to 15 in Games Workshop Peterborough back in the 90s. I had, there were amazing managers there. The hobby was a hobby and, and Paul, Alan, Jeff, Colin, they were all managers back then, and they've left like a lasting memory to me as a mid thirties person. And that's what I want to give to the next generation of hobbyists. I want to be a positive influence and I want, it's emotional talking about it, to be honest. Um, and I want people to have the same thoughts and feelings. And here in the West of Ireland, there's nowhere else for people to do this kind of stuff, really. Not, not locally here anyway. Um, but it's a lot of pressure, you know, and I feel, a great amount of stress, which sometimes over, is overbearing. Like actually today is, has been a good day, but the last week has been a bad week. So the main point of this video, right, was do I regret opening my own hobby shop? And the truth is, it depends what day you ask me. Some days, yes, it feels like, you know, it feels like it was a mistake. Um, and some days it feels like the best thing ever. Do I, do I truly regret it? No. Would I change it? No. I, I'm, 
it's going to take time, businesses take time. And for those of you out there who run your own businesses or you know work in retail or have are self-employed or those of you just work another job, like you all understand the stresses of life. And they're just amplified for me at this point in my life um, with, with the financial stresses and worries of the time we're in as well. I don't know, see, I'm going off course, but this is gonna be the, the, the take I'm gonna keep because I feel like, I feel like the difficulty to talk about it is actually like how, I, how I'm feeling. I don't talk about this kind of thing very often to people and I'm not open to sharing it to, to people out there in the public because I, I'm, I worry for how people will perceive how I feel about the industry. Um, ultimately, for me, it's a positive one. It's, it's a hobby. A lot of people ask me, has it changed how I feel about the hobby? And yes, I, I turned something that was a release and something that's my passion into a job. But that isn't always a bad thing either. Like, it, you know, I don't get the time to enjoy it the way I used to, but I get enjoyment out of different things now. I get enjoyment out of seeing other people enjoy the hobby. and. and I don't know, I hope you found this at least remotely insightful, uh, particularly this last bit, I kind of just wanted to be honest with you and I hope you found this interesting. Well, I don't know, I'm feeling emotional. Whatever you do out there, stay safe, look after your own mental health and enjoy things. Support your local gaming shops, whether that's me or someone else, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much everybody for all of your support. Thanks for watching the video. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you in the next one.